I'm Claire, an independence demonstrator for Stamping Up here in the UK. Um, thank you for joining me today. I'm here to give you ideas and inspiration for your paper crafting projects, as well as help you love what you make. Um, my videos are always fairly simple. I try and keep them um, simple so that you get the gist of what you need to make and then you go off and um, turn it into a wonderful project that's all your own. Um, I share lots of tips along the way um, and I help you get the best value from what you've purchased from Stampin' Up. Um, you can shop with me in the UK at Creative the Ottaway. Um, if you sign up to my newsletter, you'll keep up to date with all the offers and what's going on at Creative the Ottaway. Um, as well as get um, postings of my videos. Um, so I'm, I can't even think what I want to do today, because what I need to say, because I'm so excited about today's make. Um, loving the new catalogue. Um, so many gorgeous stuff inside it but the first thing that I saw like many of the demos because it was on our pre-order I'm not going to be able to find it now was the Zany Zoo Crew set um, absolutely loving this um, I just really think I know at first when you look at it you think yeah that's a good set for kids but no you're wrong it's for anybody this paper is amazing there's um, characters on there. Um, I'm not going to go and get it because I'll go on about it too much. But there's characters on there that have got cooking and yoga and dancing and arti art, artists, artists, yeah. <laughs> uh, little characters doing painting and happy birthday stuff. Let's see if I can pick some out on here. Somebody even knitting. Um, somebody at a campfire. Was a campfire one there? So literally you could do it for retirement cards or teenager cards or just your crafty friends, anything. So um, what I also love with the Stampin' Up! catalogue is that it's bursting with inspiration. For example, take this card here. How did they do that? Well, I'm going to show you something along those lines. So I'm going to stop talking. And let's craft. So this is today's make. Woo! Look at it. It really is a ta-da, but it gets even better because when you look on the inside, it's got a wow. So um, you get some dies with the die set, okay, that are curtains and you get this curvy bit. So I've made it into a bit of a stage. Okay, so that's my first exciting thing. Um, I was trying to think how how could I do this into a stage and then my sentiment that is in the stamp set is the happy birthday to you and I don't know if you've been around me stamping up a little bit even just year they had this die set that was tickets and stubs like that it was the sports event dies so I've got a perfect little ticket I was just going to put one and I thought you never go to the theatre on your own do you not very often take a friend so there's two ticket stubs there okay and then there's something sort of peeking behind it looks like something's going on in the stage so you ready for this da, da, da. wow look at that there's some seating and there's some characters i've actually fussy cut from the designer series paper because so you can just stamp the characters and die cut them out. You get dies for all of these characters. But there isn't this beaver. And I quite like the fact that he was banging his drums. And also I wanted a character on the side here. And the frog just looked perfect. It just looked like a party celebration. So that's why I fussy cut them. Really easy. easy. Don't look too close. It's not the best fussy cutting. But it's the overall look that you're going for. The wow. And then the seating, I've just used the die that I did for the front curtain. So I've just used that. And because it looks like a theatre, you automatically think of seating. Now, if this had um, a seaside picture on the front, a boat or something, when you opened it up, you'd think that was waves, which takes me to another idea. 
Um, so yeah, maybe next time a seaside you've been with a boat going up and down on the waves. Or if you did this in acetate that was see-through, you could have something popping off the page as well. All you need to remember is that from the front you see nothing. So anything that you add needs to be hidden behind here. I got really carried away with my first couple of attempts at this. Put all characters on, I thought this is going to be amazing, and then they don't hide very well. I mean, he's sort of poking out, but I wanted them to want to open it and find out what was inside. So yeah, just you just need to think, um, this isn't my original idea. Um, it's from Jennifer Maguire, you know, that fantastic lady who just wows us with all her makes. Um, this was one of her ideas and she'd put um, a big uh, sentiment on the front that hid the inside and hers were really good. So go and look for Jennifer Maguire and her open and slide surprise card. Um, for me, Stampin' Up, they're second to none and I just needed to make this zany zoo theatre scene. So shall I stop talking now because I'm just, I'm so excited, I can't wait to show you how to do it. Okay, so what do you need? Dun, dun, dun. Very little actually. You just need a base card, okay, that is four and one eighth by eleven and three quarters. So in the UK that ends up with a standard size card that will fit in an envelope. So it's just a standard size card back and front. And then we need to score, so you end up, you score it in half, it ends up with a card like that. Then we need to make some little slider guides, which are here. So you just need to four of those that are just tiny, half an inch by one and three quarters. And then of course you need to make this slider bit, which actually is just a piece that is three inches wide by five and five eighths, okay? The rest of it, it's down to your creativity, your ideas, your inspiration. Whether you put DSP on the front, whether you do a theatre um, scene like I have, whether you do a magic scene, I don't know, all sorts of things. You turn it into your own make, but you just need those few basic things to get you started. So I'm going to show you this card step by step. Now, you don't want to be watching me for hours. You just want to know how to do the basics and then you can go off and do it. So I'm going to whiz through that with you. OK, so here's my piece of card. I've just used white just because um, it shows up better on camera. Uh, but I'm going to layer it with some designer series paper. So my base card is four and one eighths. So four and one eighth along that way by eleven and three quarters. And what I'm going to do is just score it at half. So half of 11 and 3 quarters is 5 and 7 eighths. So I am just going to score it there. And remember to take my cutting blade out of the way. And I'm just going to score it. Actually, that doesn't feel like it is scoring at all. Okay. So there you go. And then that just gets folded in half. So that is exactly in half and I'm, I want to put a layer of designer series paper on the front because I'm not really loving the fact that it's a white card. I think if I put my theatre scene on the front it would just get a bit lost. So the perfect paper for this is this paper from Stampin' Up. Now when you first look at it in the catalogue it doesn't look very exciting. But it's perfect for your backgrounds or your birthdays, all sorts of things. So I'm going to tell you what it's called. It's called Bright and Beautiful and it comes in six by six. So remember it's double sided. Let me pick that up again. So if you don't like one side, you've got another choice. Look. Oh, look at those. Oh, they're lovely. OK, particularly liking the stars. So you've got a real choice of colours there, all sorts. Some of the new core colours that have come back and some of the re um, remaining colours. So absolutely loving that. So I'm going to pick that one just so that it is the same. OK, now I need to cut this to the size of the front. So I know it's five and seven eighths. So I am going to cut it at one eighth of an inch smaller, so that is five and three quarters. 
okay and the reason I'm doing that is so that I've got a little bit of a board around it and then it was four and one so I am going to cut it at four okay so now what happens is I've got that piece I'm going to stick it directly onto this just like that and just make sure there's a nice border all the way around and then I'm going to die cut a shape out of the front so I'm just going to do proper UK Blue Peter style <laughs> if you don't know what that is go and have a look and they say here's one I made earlier so I've used these dies which are the stylish shapes and I've used the square. You could do a circle, it would look quite nice with a circle. The curtains wouldn't really work. So I've used that and my paper is stuck on nice and firm. I've run it through the die cutting machine and it die cuts both out at the same time. You're left with this square, which you can use for another card, but you're left with a window in your card, which is perfect. Okay, now, I can hear you shouting at the screen because I would be doing the same. Where, how do you know where to put it? Right, you've got a whole card front. Do you just guess? Well, what we need to do is leave enough room down here for your theatre seats, but also we're going to do the um, slider mechanism here. So it needs to be down an inch. So an inch down, then die cut it. And I wouldn't worry about whether it's central or not. You can sort of see by this paper whether it's central, you've got like two lines there, two lines whips there. So I'm I'm guessing with that, but it looks okay to me. And you don't have to do it dead on an inch down, but as long as it's not less than an inch. Okay, so we've got that bit. Let's do the curtains. So like I say, in the die set, we have got this shape. Okay, and um, we've got the curtain shape which is like this. So you're gonna need two curtains. We've got two curtains, they're exactly the same, you just turn them round, two curtains. And then I've die cut a little bit here, but I'm just gonna... So I just remembered I needed the sizes for that. So the width of this is two and three quarters by one and a half. Now, how did I get to that size? Well, I don't want it exactly the size of the square, and the square is two and a half. I would just want it to overlap ever so slightly on my square either side. So I've done a quarter of an inch more, so it's about an eighth of an inch over either side. So if you're using a bigger square, I did think at first about using the bigger square, and in fact, I did have a go at that, but I just felt like it gave too much window. Uh, too much theatre and then your eyes just you're not really thinking about opening the card up you're just busy looking at the front so we die cut one of those so let me tell you that size again it was two and three quarters by half an inch and then when I'd cut the card I just die cut that right up to the edge and it gives me that okay that's going to go there then I know that I need two curtains one for either side and then the stage, so the stage, mm, just a bit of crumb cake. So again, I've just cut half an inch, but this time I want the stage to poke out a bit. So this is three and a half. So it's actually a whole inch wider than the opening. Can you see that? So it sticks out both sides. So let's have a go at sticking that on. Where is my glue? Oh no, you know what? This is a new glue, so it's going to just pour out. You know, usually I'm standing here like shaky, shaky, shaking. This time it's just going to pour out. Okay, make sure you've got the glue on the right side. And I'm just putting glue along the top. See, told you, it's going to be way too much glue. I'm just going to spread that out the end. Because what I don't want is glue showing up on the inside. So I'm just going to bring that down, so I don't want it right over, I just want it about there. So I will turn it over in a minute and let you see. 
So can you see how much I'm using? I've sort of gone about half and half. Okay. And then I'm going to have a look because something else um, mistake I made when I made my sample. This curtain goes in a lot further than you think it is going to. And you don't want it back here and see the walls. You want it to be right at the edge. So you're going to line it up at the top and then at the bottom. So let's have a look. I'm not stuck it down. I'm going to have a look how far up my stage can go. Does it need to be right on the edge or can it go up a bit? I actually think it's going to be right on the edge. So my stage is going to be in line with this line. So I'm just going to put glue just along there. And again, not too much glue. It's got no weight to hold. And again, I'm just going to do it by eye. And then my curtains are going to be either side and I'm going to put glue along the top. I'm quite nervous with this glue because it's pouring out. You watch, by the end of the session we'll be having to force it out and squeeze it really hard. So I've got glue around three sides and I'm matching up the top because the bottom I want it to overhang and I'm just making sure that it's right at the edge of the middle, about there. Okay, so you can't see the other side. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I think I'm going to lay it down and put the glue because it gives me a bit more control. I'm doing it up in the air, it's just going to flood out. Okay, so the same with this one. I'm going to match it up here. Match it up to the top and the rest will just line itself up. Okay, so there's my curtains. Now I don't usually do the sentiment till the end but because I'm so excited and I want to go ta-da, I'm going to do it now. So I have got two tickets, one in Pretty Peacock, which I love, and one in white. Obviously we're going to stamp on the white, so let's get the Pretty Peacock open and see how straight I can stamp. Maybe if I do it sideways. just going to overlap those two together so it looks like they're two tickets and then I'm going to use a couple of dimensionals on the back of there. Did I bring those in? Kept just two I think because it hasn't got any weight on it and that is the front of my card. So perfect, okay. Oh, I'm super excited already. Okay, now for the wow. So we're gonna do the bit on the inside. Now again, I've die cut this out already so you don't have to watch me. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do these slider bits first. Now I've got four pieces exactly the same. They are a half by one and three quarter, okay. And I'm just gonna stick two of them together just on top of each other. Now, you could use the sticky strips, um, you could use some dimensionals, on, and then a bit of card. Use whatever you are comfortable with. I didn't want such a fat card that I wouldn't be able to post it. So what I've done is just used cardboard because it's just enough thickness. So I've joined two together and now I'm going to put them, put some glue on there, just make sure you can see. I'm going to put one on this side and one on this side, right in the corner, level with the bottom and the side. OK, 
through just like that and then one for the other side this would look lovely with a, a, a boat scene wouldn't it really thinking that I want to go and make a boat on next so that you've just got those you've got your card and you've got your two sliders there now the next bit we're going to do is the sliding action there so I've got that prepared here earlier as well so this piece is five and five eighths by three and how I came to that was it's not quite the length of this it's going to have a score line in a minute as well because it needs to fold over. So it's five and five eighths by three, and on that long side, we're going to score it at three quarters. So I just need to make sure I've got my scorer and not my cutter. Oops, so noisy. Okay, and I'm going to fold that over. So can you see that? That's what I've got. Now on mine, I liked having a background piece because it looks like there's something coming. It makes you, it entices you to open the card basically. So I've covered this piece with some designer series paper. So I have just cut that. Mm, what colour is that? So this was four and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So basically I've just measured the size of this and cut it to eighth of an inch smaller. Oh, this is a bit I don't want to look at because I'm covering up some of the characters. <gasps> Doesn't matter. The card's worth it. So that is just going to go on there. Just make sure that is nice and level. Okay. So that's that. Bring it back over make sure it slots in between my sliders and then what I'm going to do I'm not having it right on the edge but just ever so slightly down like so making sure it's in the middle and on this scored bit that's got no DSP I'm just putting some glue and then I'm going to bring it over and press down on it just like that, okay? And then are you ready? Let's see if it works. Okay, so yes, it definitely works. It pings up at the moment because we haven't done the seating. Okay, we're gonna do that next. So that definitely works. Seating, how did we do the seating? Okay, I picked out a color from the front and again, I die cut it with that curvy die, this one. And I've got three rows of seating on mine because what you want to do is make sure that the seating doesn't show because the stage is there, the seating would be there. So you want the seating hidden behind. So I can only come up as high as this level here. Okay, so this one is two and a half inches. This one is two inches and this one is one and a half. So what we're going to do, and then I just die cut along one edge. So we're going to stick those together. If you wanted to make them stand out even more, you could do a bit of blending brush along the curvy edge, and that would just make the seats stand out a little bit more. But I'm not. I want the focus to be on my characters. So that's that one. And then this one is going to go on the next one. I know you are going to make some amazing cards with this design. I cannot wait to see them. Okay, so that's that one. So you can just about see the. Oh, oh, look what I've done. Oh, it all won't be. It won't matter. Can you see what I've done? So I've stuck it the wrong side round. So my middle one doesn't stand out as the other two because it hasn't got the die cut edge. Mm -mm -mm. I wonder if I put that back through the die cut, whether it would cut through it all, or if it can be an edge. Right, I'm just going to leave it, because the only person that's going to know is me and you, so don't tell. Okay, now, to put the seating on there, I've got my three seats together, 
on those little tabs, put some glue just on those tabs. Okay, that side and that side. Make sure that is down. Make sure that this goes right to the edge of your card and fits in lovely. So I didn't tell you that these are four and one eighth of an inch wide. So two and a half by four and one eighth, two by four and one eighth, and one and a half by um, four and one eighth. So now let's have a look. See, it doesn't come out the end, it slides up and down. Right, characters. Ooh. Okay. So we've got a couple of things left to do. We're gonna put something great to celebrate you now ideally i'd want it underneath but actually i'm going to put it there because then you can really read it otherwise i'm trying to stick too much behind the hidden seating so that is going to go down the bottom okay and it looks really nice there now oh, how do we get these to sit in so we're going to concentrate on the beaver. Let's concentrate on the beaver. Now, I like the fact that he's sort of peeking out behind the card. So what I'm going to do is bring this out for now. I'm just going to unpick it there. And I'm going to put the beaver somewhere. So I'm closing the window. And I want to see where he is. Okay, so he's about there. So when I lift it up, where is he? He's there. So let's put some glue on the back of him there. Because we'll have a bit of a wiggle room with Tombow. Now I'm using glue rather than a dimensional. Let's have a look again. And I also need to make sure that his tail is not sticking out the card. So let's have a look. Yeah. So he's there. I'm just going to tuck him in ever so slightly. Okay. So he's there. And that will give me a guide where I can put the other two. So I'm going to tuck that back in now. Like so. Make sure that he goes behind. Like that. Okay. And now I'm going to put these on. So he's going to be slightly towards the back. He's over this side. Why does that come down? So right where his hands are. So I want him hidden. So his little googly eyes are there. Like so. And then this one. The little turtle with his microphone is next to him. He's going to go down there as well. He's playing the drums. He's singing. And he's playing the flute. Or the recorder. And I think that is it. Okay. Shall we have a look? Da, da, da. So you just make sure everything is dry. And you go, da da look what I've made. It's a happy birthday to you. Look, look inside. Ta-da! Okay, so I hope you have loved crafting along with me. Um, I might just trim that off so it tucks in each time. Just that extra little tab, not the actual tail. Um, it looks exciting. It looks like there's something inside to have a look at. Really like the tickets on the front. The seating is exciting. So go, go make your own and share it with me. Um, you can send me a picture at creativeyottaway at gmail.com or find me on Instagram or Facebook under Creative The Ottaway. Um, love to see your makes as well as my own. Um, subscribe to my newsletter and subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Thanks for watching. Bye.